This is my 1980-something Yugo, and today we start our most ambitious engine swap yet. So a few months back, I bought this for some reason. I've had this goofy idea in my head for like probably 10 years, and I know other YouTubers have already done it, but now I'm gonna do it. Uh, the difference is, is that, to my knowledge, only like one other guy has one that's actually like street legal and functional. And I actually want this to be completely like registered, being able to be driven on the street, hopefully at like a reasonable speed. This is what I originally bought the Festiva for. But then the Festiva air conditioning works, so it was too nice, so it got saved. But this thing's a pile of junk. Uh, I bought it, bought it from a guy that got it out of the junkyard as a parts car for his Yugo restoration, I guess you could say. So it's missing a bunch of pieces, like the radiator's missing, the carburetor's missing. The spark plugs are Yeah, out. there's no spark it's, plugs it's in the locked, cylinder. It's locked up. Yeah. yeah, it's complete junk. He even took the spare tire out. But it's pretty rusty too. I don't know if it's that rusty for a Yugo. Like it's a little rusty. The interior is nice. Yeah, for some reason the interior is nice. Like this pretty much makes no sense. Like how did this survive out of everything? And there's a few things missing in here too. The door closes good. Yeah, I got this for $360. The guy wouldn't do 300. That was out of line. He was nearly disrespected by it, actually. But this is what I'm waiting to do. And here's what we're putting in it. This is a 420cc Harbor Freight Predator. Corey found it on the clearance rack one day. Yeah, 284.99. I don't even know what, I, I think they're like a lot now. I think they went up. Pro yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're at currently, but I think it's a lot more than that. But it, it someone ran it and then just returned it or something. Yeah, I guess it was not at work what they were doing with it or something. Yeah. So, the math that I spent about probably two minutes on in my head says this should work. But the first thing is that we have to take everything off the car that isn't required for running a Predator. Probably it's going to leave the original transmission in it. This is a five, or no, not five, it's a manual, it's a four speed. I'm used to saying five speed. That's oh, a four? Yeah, it's a four speed. The Soviets weren't in that extra gear yet. And then all this junk, but like we won't need a radiator. Oh, the oil's still good. It's pretty watery, I think. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. But it won't need a radiator, it won't need like a fuel tank really, it won't need, what else, like a big battery. A cooling well, system. Yeah, no yeah, cooling yeah, system, yeah. Radiator, radiator, no fan. We're gonna just put LED lights in it and shit. Yeah, try and make it as light as possible and then try and figure out the gearing so maybe it'll go like 45 or 50 miles an hour. Maybe 55 if it actually has enough power. But if it goes 45, it's like drivable around here. That's not too bad. And then, I don't know, see how it works. Might need more, I think this has some kind of charging system in it, but it might need a bit more. But at least it has electric start and it came with this little like panel here. So it's kind of self-contained if I just uh, extend those wires out. I had it running, or did I show you that? Did I show you that it was running? You told me it ran. Yeah, I started it. I think. I st yeah, I'm pretty sure I started it when I got when I got it. Yeah, because I think you only had so long to return it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it was like yep. a day or two, and that was it. Yeah. Still some gas in there, not much. Yeah, it ran. I think I just put oil in it. It was like I think they drained the oil or something. I don't know. It, it sounded fine. But yeah, this car, as it sets, well, if it was complete, I think weighs like 1,900 pounds. So, out the factory engine and everything, if we can get this down to like 1,500, that would really help. So I guess we're going to start stripping it here. Like I'm easy. 
equal We just had to get extra ballsy here and put it up on the lift. Check out this thing's got one transverse leaf spring in the back. This is some engineering. Yeah, somehow it's not rusty underneath. Like, I can't get this. Yeah, it's pretty insane. It has no rust underneath. Yeah, it's interesting. It just goes to that. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's kind of set up weird. Yeah. Well, we did see what a communist catalytic converter is worth. That's definitely the original one. That's interesting to see. Um... Yeah, the cat guys are going to love running the numbers on that. Probably won't find it, will I doubt it. They'll just lowball you and then make serious money on it. This exhaust is pretty good. Maybe I should reuse it. That's what I was thinking. Just tap it. It's actually a lot less shittier than I thought it was. Someone went over the car. I would just tap into it right in the middle there, cut the cap right where the clamp is. Yeah. You, you know, you need that cap. It just needs some, it just needs some hangers back here because that's why the ropes on there, they're all broken. Yeah, that's good. I'd leave it. Not worth spending the time. It's a little too big for what you're doing, but. Well, maybe. It necks down pretty good right here. It's barely over an inch, I'd say. That's the one that's seized. Well, I don't even say it's seized. We pushed it in here. Yeah. Well, let's take the rest of it apart. left earlier and here's the pile of scrap metal we've accumulated so far uh, but was left to the engine some miscellaneous stuff and then I have a garbage bag full of the non-metal parts so this should make everything a little bit lighter hopefully and I'll show you what I've been uh, brainstorming here so aside from cleaning up the pile of rust disaster on the floor I decided to throw the Predator in there and try and start brainstorming. So what was nice about this was there's a cross member that goes under the engine transmission and it, the transmission actually mounts to it. Might be hard to see down there, but there's like a triangular plate and then there's a mount in that cross member. So between that mount and the side mount, the transmission is actually supported in its like factory location. I thought I was going to have to make some kind of like bracing or something for that, so that actually saves a ton of effort. 
The other nice thing is, is that the input shaft from the transmission does not use a pilot bearing into the engine. So this, this input shaft here, you cannot wiggle. So it does not require support like uh, some manual transmissions do into the back of the engine. I'll probably still support it, but it's nice to know that it's pretty much going to be straight if I don't screw this up too bad. And it shouldn't snap off if I don't screw this up too bad. The engine fits in the engine bay a lot bigger than you would think. Uh, I mean, it pretty much looks like it's designed for that engine bay. It's only a single cylinder replacing a four cylinder. If I was having a stool in some wood right now, I was kind of trying to figure out like where I was going to put it. I think I have it kind of mapped out in my head what I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to have to run a jack shaft from the engine pulley back to a jack shaft and then over and then have a drive from the jack shaft to the transmission. What I'm going to do to input into the transmission is here is the original clutch disc I harvested off the engine. I'm going to cut the center portion out here with the splines because that will slide into the transmission and engage the input shaft. Now I'm going to try and fashion that onto some kind of shaft that I can put like a pillow block bearing there and then everything's happy I can put a pulley off of that. So that's the current plan. I'm not sure how, how much is going to change before this is all said and done. And then the other thing is, I think I'm going to move the gas tank, which makes sense. I'll probably put it up there where the spare tire was. And I'd really like to run the factory exhaust so this factory Predator muffler can go. But other than that, this isn't too bad. I was kind of worried at first because of how cramped it is, but it looks like it might actually be roomy enough to do something with. So once I get the engine, then I'll worry about like the rest of the car. So I know not too much happened in this video, but it's something. The original engine's out and the Predator is it's in. Uh, I've had this project, not necessarily a Yugo, like this was just the icing on the cake that it's this car, but I've had this plan like in my head between me and my other friend, the other Justin Kramer, if you're aware of him. Uh, we both have been like laughing about doing this for like probably 10 or 15 years. It just never got done and I decided I was just going to finally do it. So unfortunately in the meantime, like I think at least two or three or probably 10 other YouTube channels already did it. I didn't really watch all of them. I know the guy with the Honda Insight that did this. Uh, I guess his is actually like street legal and everything, so he beat me to that too. But, I don't know, this is a Yugo, it's kind of funny for that reason. Yeah, I'm going to order up some parts and try and keep moving on this project. It's almost Thanksgiving here in the U.S., so if I get some parts by the weekend, I think it's going to be a four-day weekend for me, and my cheap bill get some stuff done. Uh, even though it's like a lawnmower engine, it's actually like kind of complex because you can't just bolt stuff together like you normally do with a car, trying to make something work that was never intended to work in a car. So, follow along on this magical adventure. I'll see you in the next video.